It's Saturday the 2nd of June 2018 and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. A very warm welcome from London in the UK. And a welcome to any new listeners if this is the first podcast that you are listening to. Well, here are today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee. Nice to meet you, if you are new. And I go through every EV article online so you don't have to. Coming up on today's show, a Model 3 teardown claims a low cost of production and California approves almost a billion dollars worth of investments into electric vehicles. But first of all, we have to start the today with a, uh, a new five-year plan from Fiat Chrysler Automotive, FCA. And the parting shot of their CEO, Sergio Mattioni, before he hands over the reins to... Well, we don't know who he's handing them over to. Well, the plans were announced yesterday at a very grand event in Balocco in Italy, where the CEO had plans for a mid-size Ram pickup and an uncertain future for Chrysler, Dodge and Fiat. Uh, but what about their plans for electrification? Well, you can expect some new models from Jeep, Ram, Alpha and Maserati. Fiat Chrysler will phase out production of all diesel cars in Europe Within the next couple of years, by 2021, Maccioni said, uh, the company sees the engine technology as increasingly challenged by both regulation and consumer attitudes and of declining importance. That's according to Automotive News. Fiat plans a full electric lineup around the 500 family. He said the company expects full utilisation of Italian plants by 2022. Well, Maserati plans to add 32 dealerships in North America in the next three years by 2022 and will aim squarely at Tesla with a new high-performance plug-in hybrid sport coupe based on the Alfieri concept. It's a, a new car that the brand head Tim uh, Koniskis said or Koniskis. Uh, the all-wheel drive EV is going to come in a drop-top model as well and will feature an aluminium frame for weight saving with a top speed of 186 miles an hour. Well, buyers are going to be offered the choice of three Ferrari-developed powertrains, including an all-electric version capable of 0-62 in the Golden 2 Seconds. That's according to Auto Express. We are talking Rimac territory, we're talking new Tesla Roadster territory, and soon Maserati territory. Uh, all diesel engines will be eliminated from Maserati's product range, and uh, they're going to be replaced by something called Maserati Blue. It's a whole new sub-brand, and it's going to be fully electrified, spanning four models. It's going to allow Maserati to target the electric pioneers, the likes of Porsche and Tesla, uh, with a range of cutting-edge battery electric vehicles. All future powertrains, again, engineered and supplied by... Ferrari, including anything electrified. Well, the plans do sound rather vague at this stage. A bit of a moving target, if you like. Maserati Blue will compromise hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and full BEV versions of the Alfieri, uh, the all-new Quattropote Saloon, and the next-gen Levante SUV. Each electric version is going to use three electric motors and torque vectoring to deliver four-wheel drive. Now, Maserati say they're going to offer some long range and quick charge times, but no numbers attached to those. Nothing specific. Meanwhile, Green Car Reports, in their look at the news by FCA, were more interested in an electric Jeep. The Jeep Grand Commander is going to arrive by 2021. It's going to be all electric. By 2022, Fiat Chrysler is going to offer three new all-electric Jeeps and six plug-in hybrids. Now, while the plug-in hybrids may come to the US, it's not clear that the electric Jeeps, the pure bevs, are going to be roaming the LA freeways anytime soon. Maccioni uh, noted that low gas prices in North America, until now, 
uh, do make for a longer payback period for electrified vehicles. That would imply FCA's new plug-in vehicle options will be slower to arrive in the US than here in Europe and over in China. A plug-in hybrid version of the Renegade will go on sale in 2020 and a mild hybrid in 2021. The company also confirmed a plug-in hybrid version of the new Wrangler Midway. Through 2020, in addition to the eTalk mild hybrid version, due later this year. You can read more at Green Car Reports. Great article uh, written by the journalists there. Well, the chap I mentioned, Timothy uh, Kuniskis, the head of Maserati and Alpha, said this, and I quote, It becomes increasingly clear that electrified powertrains are expected in the luxury market, end quote. Who do we think we can thank for that? Oh yeah, that would be Tesla, wouldn't it, if you're talking the luxury market. FCA's 2022 electric strategy for Europe. Now that is where heavy fines are in order. If certain targets are exceeded for CO2 limits, what they're aiming for at FCA as a, as a group, as a whole, in terms of the whole fleet sales, 20%, so a fifth of their entire fleet, plug-in hybrids, or battery hybrids. That's just 20% what we would call an electric vehicle. 40% mild hybrids. So we're looking there at 48 volt systems, the kind of things that allow the engine to shut down when you're at motorway speeds and you're cruising, and then restart the kind of 48 volt hybrid systems that will um, spool up turbos rather than using the engine to do that. Uh, the 48 volt systems, the mild hybrid systems that will take on those ancillary things that otherwise belts and pulleys and things in the engine would have otherwise done. And 40% non-electrified, the full combustion. So we are still only talking 20% plug-in or full BEV. Well, the electric timetable for FCA is this. Sometime this year, we will get to see a mild hybrid of the Ram 1500. Then by 2020, we're going to see a mild hybrid Fiat 500, a plug-in hybrid Jeep Renegade and Jeep Wrangler, a hybrid Jeep Grand Cherokee, a full BEV version of the Fiat 500e, and a battery electric version of the Maserati Alfieri. Then a year later, in 2021, a mild hybrid Jeep Renegade, a plug-in hybrid Maserati Alfieri, and a full battery electric vehicle for the Jeep Grand Commander. The one that stood out in there, which did you notice it? The Fiat 500e, the compliance car that they made for California, the car that Sergio Mattioni begged you not to buy because they lost so much money on every single one made. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, they're going to bring it back in, 2020, uh, in 2021. Uh, 2020, actually, uh, is a full electric version everywhere else. Nice. Uh, finally, FCA are investing the grand total of nine billion US dollars in their electrification program. And the Fiat brand isn't dead. The brand's future, they say, Fiat's future will lie in electric city cars, according to Sergio. So that was the big news yesterday. Uh, moving on, though, to another bit of big news. It's the beginning of a brand new month, which means we can now start to check out the newly updated, the newly designed, redesigned, and may I say very fancy pants look of the new Inside EV's monthly sales scorecard. All joking aside, by the way, uh, they've totally redesigned it, done the archive as well, and the scorecard is now easier to read, and you can chart the winners and losers each month. And from now on, there will be only one winner every single month, and it will be the Model 3. Now it's at the top of the charts, it's going to stay there, no doubt about it. Uh, now, Inside EV's estimate for Model 3 sales is, in the month of May, 6,250. Now, we never know until Tesla announced the numbers, uh, but the Model S is estimated at 1,520, and the Tesla Model X just behind, 1,450. And if you are thinking about what all that adds up to, well, Tesla's total in May, 9,220 cars, estimated to be sold by Tesla in May. And who says they don't know how to build cars? And if you are thinking about what Nissan Leaf has been doing, well, the Leaf sales for May hit 1,500 and more or less than the S. 
slightly more, 1,576 units uh, for the Nissan Leaf. It's the highest Leaf sales have been in a single month since December 2016. They estimate for the month of May uh, that the Chevy Bolt is 1,125 and the Volt is 1,675. So looking at the top five in May so far, number one, always going to be now for, from now on the Tesla Model 3. In second place, the Toyota Prius Prime. In third place, the Tesla Model S. In fourth place, the Tesla Model X. And in fifth place, the Chevy Bolt EV. Of course, there is a link in the show notes to the May 2018 plug-in electric vehicle sales report card. Well, a company in Germany has completed a teardown of the Tesla Model 3, and they claim to have worked out the cost for labour parts and logistics. The raw costs, according to them, are $18,000. And the labour costs, well, that is a very conveniently round number. Always be suspicious of numbers that are of that round. Uh, the labour costs, they say, are exactly $10,000. One of the test engineers said this, and I quote, if Tesla manages to build the planned 10,000 units a week, a week, uh, the Model 3 will deliver a significant positive contribution to earnings, end quote. Yeah, no, hmm, Sherlock, of course it will. Well, Fred over at Electric concluded that the analysis would point to Tesla almost hitting a 25% margin on a standard 35,000 Model 3. Yeah, not many of those are going to be sold uh, without any upgrades. Once they hit, only once they hit, 10,000 units per week. That is, you know, we just talked about them selling 6,000 uh, plus in a month. That, of course, 40,000 in a month is the target. Uh, he says, I doubt that it will be the case. I'd love to be wrong on this because many people in the auto industry are hoping the Model 3 will be unprofitable just to prove what they've been saying, that you can't mass produce a long-range EV. Well, then the argument, no, it's not like, then the conversation, the subject matter, took to Twitter. And Fred, uh, at, uh, Fred Lambert Electric, uh, tweeted this to Elon Musk. You agree that the cost could go down to $28,000 on average at 10,000 units per week? And Elon replied, one word, definitely. So you could see, uh, for those invested in Tesla, I'm not, by the way, uh, but you could see those that worry about all these kind of things like margins, a 28,000 cost to Tesla on a 35,000 base model once they make 10,000 per week. But again, not many people are going to buy the base model. Most people are going to be upgrading them even a little bit, and that's where the margins start to increase. Well, the final story today, uh, this is news which may have gone under the radar for you, for some people, uh, because we get all excited about uh, new car announcements and all those kind of things, but I want to highlight it. It's a seismic level of investment. It's just huge. California's electric utility companies will spend nearly $768 million US dollars on charging infrastructure for EVs, for trucks and buses under a series of proposals approved two days ago on Thursday by state regulators, according to the San Francisco Chronicle article that we found. The programs, they say, viewed together, are believed to be the largest state-level effort yet by the utility industry to encourage the adoption of electric vehicles. Well, Governor Jerry Brown has set a goal of having 5 million zero-emission vehicles in California roads on California roads by 2030, a steep jump from the almost 400,000 pure electrics and plug-ins now registered in the state. Well, Franz von Holshausen, the chief designer of Tesla, spoke up on this subject only recently to say 5 million zero-emission vehicles, California, 2030, we'll smash it, we'll get their way before then. And he knows what he's talking about. He's privy to all of those top secret meetings. Uh, there will be a focus on creating the infrastructure to uh, support charging stations, particularly, this is interesting, particularly for electric trucks and electric buses. And that's in contrast to previous expenditures, which have been focusing on the cars. I'll put a link to the uh, San Francisco Chronicle article. Do read more and check out their site for an, another excellent article all about that. And notice the focus is shifting from EVs and cars which sit on 
driveways and outside offices for 95% of the time that you own them to electrifying miles. The trucks, the buses, the working vehicles, the ones that are on the road, in some cases 24 hours a day, uh, the ones that would do shifts and, and, you know, for many of those delivery trucks, the ones that charge overnight. The focus in many cases, in many countries all around the world is shifting to electric miles, not electric cars, as a way of cleaning up the air. So how do you fancy helping me spread the word about electric cars? If you can share this podcast with anybody, somebody, one person, I'd be so grateful. And you can listen to every previous episode of the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. Also, we've added SoundCloud. Uh, It's a slow start, but a few people said they like SoundCloud. So I put it on. There's no effort for me to put it on there. It's a couple of clicks. Costs me a little bit per month uh, to upgrade to a kind of pro plan. Um, But if you use SoundCloud, then let me know. And, you know, if it's still kind of middling, I'll I'll stop doing it. But uh, let me know. Give me some feedback either on the comments on the blog on our socials or the YouTube comments. If you want to say hi, just search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.